There are certain meals we make that instantly transport us right back to our childhood. It's that comfort food effect with peak nostalgia. My mom used to make this for her three crazy boys for special occasions like birthdays and such. So today, we're making the Harrell family tuna casserole. Now let's go! I've just got a pot on the stove. Heat is a touch over low. And I'm just adding unsalted butter. Now when that butter is just about melted, we'll add in all our onions. It's just a diced onion, about a medium sized dice on that. So I'm trying to keep this really simple by doing it all in one pot. So we'll sweat these onions down for a good eight minutes or so. And then we'll add flour and build a whole roux all within one pot. Just a little bit of salt going in at this point too. All right, onions have been sweating for about eight minutes. They're nice and soft and translucent. Now we'll add our flour. That's just all purpose flour. Now the consistency we're looking for here is almost like wet sand, where you can kind of mold it into a shape, but then it falls back down, if you know what I mean. Of course, the recipe is always gonna be measured out in the description, but if you know what you're looking for, it's much easier to find. So now I'll cook this down for another seven, eight minutes on low heat. A huge mistake I see so many people making, and it blows my mind every time, is they'll just melt the butter and the flour, and then immediately add the milk, and you're gonna end up with a very raw, floury tasting bechamel or white sauce which is what the base of my tuna casserole is. I'll do a whole tutorial on roux at some point. There are really five kinds of roux in my eyes. There's a white roux, which is basically what we're making, a little past that. There's a blonde roux, there's a brown roux, there's a dark brown roux, and a more unknown roux called a black roux, which is used in a lot of Cajun Creole cooking. Okay, there we go, that's nicely cooked, and you can literally smell the change. As a general rule for roux, I either add cold liquid to a hot roux like we're gonna do here today, or sometimes I'll have pre-made cold roux, which I add to a hot liquid, and that should give you the best texture. So we'll start going in with our whole milk, but just little by little, just pour a little splash. At this point, you can turn up the heat a little past medium, and with a whisk, we really wanna work it. That's another trick to a great smooth white sauce. You work it, you let it seize up, and then you add more milk. See, seize up, add a little more milk, and work it in. So every time you add the milk, it's gonna look like it really loosens up all of a sudden. But then as soon as it's hot, boom, it's thick again. You have to account for the fact the noodles are gonna thicken the sauce. So you want it looser than you actually want it before it goes into the oven. There we go again, starting to thicken up a lot. Add a little more milk. And you just repeat that process until all your milk is incorporated. Okay, there we go. Okay, now with the heat on low, I'm gonna add in half the cheddar cheese for this recipe, little by little. I'm just using a nice English cheddar for this it's pretty sharp really good you want to be careful with the salt on this dish until after you put the cheese and the tuna because there's a lot of salt in that cheese and tuna right so you got to taste it for salt afterwards all we did now was just do a little salt in the onion if you remember so add half your cheese in three stages now just turn the heat off plenty of heat in here to melt that cheese and warm up the rest of the ingredients now I'm just using tuna in olive oil that's the one I kind of prefer obviously get the best safest tuna you can a little bit of that oil is definitely okay and you want to break up the tuna a little I like kind of bigger chunks. I don't want it totally shredded, but I don't want huge chunks either. But that falls apart really easily. Just give it a mix. Okay, now I'm gonna add some Sergeant Cuban reporting for duty. This is how he prefers his profiles. That's just black pepper. You know, do it to taste, meaning to your taste. Okay, mix that in. This is when you want to taste. For seasoning, wow. The seasoning is really good. I'm just putting a touch of salt because we're also gonna salt our pasta water or noodle water. And in today's case, I'm just using egg noodle noodles. Usually I go for a bigger egg noodle, but this is what I could find. And so on the package, these noodles say it's gonna take four minutes for them to cook. But because this whole thing is going in the oven, it would be foolish to cook them all the way through right now. So what do we do? Let's cook them for like two and a half minutes. They're definitely gonna finish in that sauce in the oven. And hopefully they won't be too overcooked. Now last thing over here, frozen peas going straight into your tuna casserole. The heat's off on that. Can't be tuna casserole without frozen peas. This is the Harrell family version. I learned this from my mom, so there's no debating this. Okay, guys, and by throwing them in at this point frozen, hopefully we're gonna hold the color and texture a little bit All right, there we go two and a half minutes on the pasta. Oh god add that Sorry if that was a bad angle and we're just gonna gently work that together careful not to break the pasta too much or egg noodles You could totally just eat this right now, <laughs> you know um, but then it wouldn't be tuna casserole. So yeah, that looks great. Now to get that into your baking dish, don't wanna leave it in that pot or everything will continue cooking and we'll just flatten that out. Now, because we're awesome, we're gonna add some unsalted butter to panko breadcrumbs, melted butter, mix, little touch of salt, and the other half of our cheddar cheese, just mix it all up. Let's just sprinkle our topping on. I just like to use my hands. Make sure you get a little everywhere. There you have it. Now we're simply gonna bake at 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Get it in, 
bake that anywhere from about 20 to 25 minutes, but I will always give you an exact time when it comes out. There we go, I actually baked it for almost 30 minutes. Definitely wanna let that cool down for about 10, 15 minutes. All right, and I'll tell you what, if it were my birthday, and it is, this is the meal I want, purely for nostalgia. All right, let's see how we did. Oh man, mmm. Mm. <laughs> Bring it in, Fridge. It's a friendly day. It's my birthday. And all I really want to do is give you a nice elbow spin back. Mm. For the rest of my life, this dish will always bring me back. It's amazing. Video number 27 done. And until next time, you know I love you. Man.